investigation into D.C. Council member Trayon White. He's accused of accepting tens of thousands of dollars in bribes in exchange for pressuring city workers to renew certain contracts. So who was allegedly paying White? Well, he's accused of accepting bribes from violence intervention services that have contracts worth $5.2 million with the city. But no specific company was named. These services provide mentorship in high crime areas to de-escalate dangerous situations and even broker neighborhood ceasefires. Now, one company that White allegedly vouched for did have its city contract terminated. It was supposed to help people experiencing homelessness. But the Department of Human Services found it was falsifying background checks. 7 News will continue working to find out who is involved and how your tax dollars are spent. Coming up in just a few minutes, I-Team reporter Scott Taylor is taking a much closer look at one of the D.C. departments that runs these programs. Why questions about who is paying for what have long plagued that office. Well, I'm done about it. Tonight, a D.C. council member faces up to 15 years in prison if he's convicted on federal bribery charges. Ward 8 council member Trayon White is accused of taking tens of thousands of dollars to push for the city to renew certain contracts. And he was arrested Sunday afternoon and released about 24 hours later. He's due back in court on September 19th. 7 News spoke today with a former federal prosecutor about what we can expect from White's defense. I suppose a possible defense for council, council member White will be, he'll say he was entrapped by this, that the government reached out to him and they, they put a cooperating witness with him to say that he was entrapped. That's uphill, that's a defense that he would have to prove at trial. The challenge for, for him will be, they'll have recordings where he's accepted cash. It's not like he accepted a check that was, you know, uh, revealed publicly in some sort of campaign finance report. This was cash that was off the books. So that'll be a challenge for him to explain that to a jury. Now, while so Trayon, it's interesting that that while Trayon White's lawyers are looking ahead to September, he's also up for re-election this November. And Tom Rousey is joining us from the alert test now. Tom White overwhelmingly won the Ward Eight primary, but what does this investigation mean for his position on the council? Yeah, Megan, Scott, a lot of folks wondering that, especially since Trayon White was widely expected to win this November as he ran for re-election there in Ward 8. Well, if you go on the official DC council page, you'll see at the moment, Trayon White is still a council member. He's still listed with everyone else and he's gonna remain on the council at least for now. But we're told he will remain one until either he is convicted of a felony or if the council decides to vote to kick him off the council. Now, kicking him off, is that's not an easy thing. It would require a five-sixth vote of the council. However, before even considering a move like that, Phil Mendelson, the council chair, says he would form a committee to look into the situation with Trayon White and help decide what, if anything, should be done. The D.C. council has never voted to force someone off the council. That said, it almost happened five years ago with former member Jack Evans, but he resigned before that could happen after an investigation found that he had committed ethics violations. Scott. All right, some good insight there. Thank you, Tom. Meanwhile, one of the DC departments connected to the federal criminal complaints against White is the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement. Seven News has been digging into their handling of violence interrupter programs for months now. And White was. Uh, here you go. <laughs> here you go. Uh -oh. um, Wow. Salute the team buddy, man. He says um 500 something about whatever that is, man. Salute to you, man. Whatever uh, denomination yeah. that is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. He said everyone's answer to so everyone answers to someone. Who was Mr. Councilman kicking up to? Yeah, I mean, like he he probably said it in the thing, because the way he yeah. also said it, like he probably yeah. actually told them. Yeah, so where they where you saw the part where they said employee, um, government employee number three, government employee number four, those were names that were redacted, but those are names he was naming names. Damn. So, yeah, that's who he was kicking. So like when he bumped it, when he told him to bump it up to 10, he's saying because yeah. he got a grease palms. Yeah. So he's like, 
Yeah, so he's like, you was you was throwing me five, but now throw me ten. I need ten. I got a grease palms type thing. Yeah, I got a damn. That's crazy, man. All that money flowing around, man. Um, yeah, man. And listen, I can see how it would be hard to, you know, I mean, just like he said, like it's some it's some it's some cow. Uh, what do you say? A, a cash a cash cow. cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is true though. Yeah, and, and and if you a hood dude and you got a bunch of, and I'm sure he got hood dudes around him. As far as not, I'm not talking about like carjackers and shit, but like dudes. Yeah, like, yeah, from, from the, the community. Yeah, yeah, from the community. You only got be from the streets. Like that, Nate. That side of town, you don't even got be from the streets. Yeah, you, you just, just be from there. There, yeah. and you gonna have like a certain type of. You know how Pac say. Um, everybody in LA got a little bit of thug in them. <laughs> yeah. Got a little bit of thug in them. Yeah, Southeast, everybody got a little bit of thug in them. You know what I'm saying? Allegedly bribed to move along contract renewals for two companies that supply these violence interrupters. I team reporter Scott Taylor is joining us now live with more on this, Scott. I've discovered uh, this lady, Quelly Sneed, doesn't want to answer my questions on camera. She is the interim director of DC's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or ONES for short. Her office also violates DC code when it comes to handing over documents the public has a right to see. Mm. Seven News started asking oh, questions Lord. about the violence interrupter program run by DC's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or ONES, in December of last year. The federal criminal complaint against DC council member Cherion White mentions ONES as one of the two DC departments that White took bribes to influence contract renewals for companies doing business with ONES in its violence interrupter program. The program is made up of outreach workers who live in the neighborhoods they service oh, no. and help to lower violent crime on the streets. There's no evidence. The I-team has been asking for months for an on-camera interview with one's Quelly Sneed. She's the interim director, oh, but wow. that hasn't happened. She had no issues talking to 7 News in June about 23 men graduating from one's Pathways program, which is a nine-week course to change the mindset of people going down the wrong path. Generally, we work with um, those that have been. Think about that. Think about what they just said. They said that's a bunch of nothing. Listen to this. With one's Quelly Sneed. She's the interim director, but that hasn't happened. She had no issues talking to 7 News in June about 23 men graduating from one's Pathways program, which is a nine week course to change the mindset of people going down the wrong path. A nine week course to change the mindset. That's vague of people going yeah. down the wrong what, uh, path. What path That's exactly? The going to run the wrong path. Oh. Teaching motherfuckers how to tie a tie and shit. And listen, man, I, I, what is it, 23 dudes in there? Probably 22 of them didn't know how to tie a tie, if not all of right. them. So, I mean, I get it, man, but the vague, the vagueness of that makes it, I think they can reach their benchmarks easily because their benchmarks are probably vague. Right. Like they don't have like hard, concrete things. And, and listen, we know who remembers that story we did of that program where that guy was taking people out to the lake to pick up trash. It was like a 90, it was a 1994 video from Hezekiah News and like four or five of the people got killed in the program. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah. I think I was there too. Yeah, that, that um, these programs, uh, these these dudes in these programs are coming home from prison, coming home from jail. They're living in the stay in the streets. They live in shelters. I've been in these programs, man. Um, just just being um in the program, and I seen how it works, man. It, it's 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 you ain't you ain't fixing that with this. You can't fix nothing with this, man. You can't fix that problem with this. Companies doing business with ONES in its violence mm -hmm. interrupter program. The program is made up of outreach workers who live in the neighborhoods Excellent. they service and help to lower violent crime on the streets. The I-team has been asking for months for an on-camera interview with ONES' Quelly Sneed. 
She's the interim director, but that hasn't happened. She had no issues talking to 7 News in June about 23 men graduating from One's Pathways program, which is a nine-week course to change the mindset of people going down the wrong path. Generally, we work with um, those that have been impacted by gun violence or maybe even a perpetrator of gun violence. 7 News also submitted a Freedom <laughs> of Information Act request to ONES on December 21st of last year, asking for records of Progressive Life Center, who supplies violence interrupters to ONES through five subcontractors. Our request included a year's worth of the vendor's week-ahead schedule, critical incident response, weekly events and activities, and five monthly reports. All are required from each vendor. ONES took months to fill our request. Under DC code, ONES is allowed 15 days to fill a Freedom of Information Act request and an additional 10 days if requested. On June 26, six months after a public document request, ONES started to hand over documents detailing the work of all five vendors. 7 News has discovered many of the subcontractors who work for Progressive Life Center are missing reports, including monthly community empowerment plans, and monthly climate reports. Climate reports. One says it took six months to hand over documents because it had to review hundreds of records and redact information from five vendors. We asked for the same records, the same records from DC's Office of the Attorney General. It works with four vendors to run a violence interrupter program. It started handing over its documents within 30 days. None of its records are missing for the i-team scott taylor seven news hey yo seven news that's the reporting on these violence inter yo he yo so he kept, so now i know who it is yo he kept talking about somebody he was trying to bag but he was saying that they didn't they were the interim director <laughs> so that's her and he said he was oh, trying wow. to yeah, he basically said he was trying to blackmail her because that that one's office and another office was supposed to merge. And in order for her to go over, they she needed like votes. And he was talking about how he was trying to tell her he would with not not blatantly, but he was basically saying he was going to withhold her vote if she didn't push this man's contract through. And he was like low key talking about how he, she was he was blackmailing her. So now I know who that is fucked up. So. Wow. So he 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 basically like he gonna have to cop. There's no way he can go to trial. Yeah, that entrapment shit ain't gonna work. That's what I'm saying. It's not like like he just was volunteering this information. Like it wasn't like you know what I'm saying. It, he was doing. He was leading it a lot of times. So that entrapment shit ain't gonna work. Yeah, it never works though. Entrapment is I've never seen that really work with something like that. Like even a bait car is hard to get like entrapment to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it, it, he, he got entrapment stuff. Ain't no judge worth his salt. Um, shout out to Kimberly Ashcraft, man. She says, best channel on YouTube, not a bribe, just a fact. Salute to, um, salute to you, Kimberly. Salute to um, Text47, man, on Rumble. He says, okay, Oc, $5 challenge accepted. Salute to you, man. Interrupters on our YouTube channel. If you scan that QR code on your screen, you can find a full breakdown of how they work, how much money they get, and how proposed budget cuts could mean some pretty big changes. You can also, by the way, find more of our extensive coverage of the federal bribery charges themselves that have been brought against Trayon White. For now, though, let's check in with First Alert Meteorologist Steve Rudin for an update on the forecast. Steve? Hey, very nice out there right now. Our temperatures for the remainder of the evening and then into tomorrow, cooler than average, but don't get used to it. Warmer air is on the way early next week, and most of the area back into the 90s for daytime highs along with the heat added humidity. Look at this out there right now. Feels wonderful. 74 degrees downtown. Same in Fredericksburg. 74 this hour at Warrington. 68 in Winchester and also 68 degrees in Cumberland. Now, winds are anywhere between about 8 to 15 miles per hour. We have some stronger gusts closer to the river, upwards of 20 to 25. Those winds are going to settle down, but they're mainly from the north-northwest and that's what's helping to keep our temperatures so refreshing and cool and comfortable. So if you're going out this evening, 
evening. Not going to have to worry about any wet weather. Any clouds that we have out there this hour are going to slowly dissipate and perhaps just a few passing clouds overnight, but not going to mount to a whole lot. Evening forecast looks like this. We drop through the 70s, eventually into the 60s by 10, 11 o'clock tonight. And we will see temperatures come early tomorrow morning in the upper 40s, Petersburg and Luray, lower 50s in Warrington and Winchester inside the Beltway, anywhere between about 53 to 55, 58 degrees. And once we get through tomorrow morning, we have a very comfortable day again oh, tomorrow. Mid 70s, Panhandle. The weather, man. The weather, man. Oh. Hey. Yeah, Perhaps riders do lower weather very well. Maybe the lower temperatures will uh, reduce casualties. Well, maybe the Jews, man. Ain't the Jews responsible for that, man? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, the Jews uh, changing the weather out here. Making the snow and shit. Yeah, man. Um, no doubt. No doubt. Damn yeah, man. Jews. Some people require peculiar services, I will say. Uh, they, they said they mediated 344 ceasefires. Like, <laughs> I could, you know, I think we have to stop and, and here for a minute and just remember how fucking ridiculous this is. You know, <laughs> like hey, we need to stop treating this like this is some blase fucking normal shit because this is insane that this is needed in every city in the United States. This is Baltimore. Baltimore. Flagship. This is this is Baltimore. This is it in Baltimore, right up the road. Completely different city. Completely different vibe. Nothing similar between the like uh, of the, the people are there's no like connection between the baltimore people <laughs> not at all people. Not but at all. Oh, I thought... you know, the same shit going on i uh i saw in the comment section on the video i was watching that uh that dc and, and baltimore don't get along for some reason yeah, it's, I mean, like, not so much jail. these days, but back in the day, yeah. yeah, it was real bad. Jail and um, juvie. Yeah, in the jails. Yeah, yeah, and and um, because the street shit, I never heard of no niggas spinning a block up on some Baltimore niggas. I never heard of no Baltimore niggas coming through beefing right. with DC niggas. I never heard of none of that. I never heard of. It. My sister went to a club in Baltimore like one time, and that's like. The only type person I know that and, and like, like went to Baltimore to hang out. Like I, I mean, we went to the harbor a few times, and I think they have an aquarium or something up there. I went to yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but but as far as like just like I didn't, I never knew anybody from Baltimore growing up. Never knew anybody who lived in Baltimore. And I'm right. super close too. Less yeah. than an hour. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I never, I never hung out in Baltimore. I never had nobody I could go hang out with in Baltimore. Now I did know s s some dudes who had a family up there, um, but their family lived there, but they moved from DC. And I, and I did know one dude that um, my, my, my um, my cousin's baby daddy. He was from Baltimore. But as far as like just going there, no, nah, man. Yeah. Not never. Casually. Don't yeah. even know where, where the fuck. Don't even know nothing up but the harbor. Like once I leave the harbor, I don't know where the fuck I'm at. I don't know yeah, left from right or right down. <laughs> My oh, ex wow. was from Baltimore. Fucking psycho. She was a straight, straight nutcase. <laughs> Sounds about right. Reaches Baltimore City's flagship gun violence prevention program, a cornerstone to the mayor's community violence intervention strategy. But it remains shrouded in secrecy from how the program works. Have you seen the form that the Safe Streets workers used when they go out in the communities and talk to people that they keep track of their mediations? Who its employees are? Will the city give us the names of the workers? And how it spends tax dollars? We have to have some transparency. Uh, we've been access for that information for a very long, long time. Those are just some of the questions that I've been demanding answers to for years. Tonight, I'm going in depth on the Safe Streets program. Uh oh, thank you for joining us on this week's Mackenzie edition of Fox in. 45 News in depth. I'm Mackenzie Frost. Each week, I'll take a deep dive into the issues that matter most Late to dive. you. Today, the focus on Baltimore City's flagship gun violence intervention program, Safe Streets. I've been investigating the Safe Streets program for years, and today we're looking at three key issues. The budget, 
transparency, and criminal activity. When it comes to the budget, we know that the city pours millions of dollars into two community-based organizations to run the Safe Streets programs. How the program uses that money isn't exactly clear. Safe Streets also suffers from a lack of transparency. We have seen hundreds and sent hundreds of emails looking into how the program operates, but time and time again, the city refuses to answer some of those questions. Safe Streets also faces scrutiny and criminal connections. The program, which employs ex-convicts, is touted as a second chance. Fox 25 News has found several cases where workers have continued to commit crimes, including some Word. with gang ties operating out of Safe Street sites. Safe Streets is in the business of preventing violence in pockets of neighborhoods across Baltimore City. From Brooklyn and Cherry Hill to Bel Air Edison in Sandtown, there are 10 different locations around Baltimore. But the workers themselves remain largely a mystery. It's through plea deals and digging up court documents that Baltimore City residents learn more information about the criminal history of people tasked with interrupting violence. Leaders inside City Hall often only talk about the concerns when we ask questions. Fox 45 News uncovered at least six people connected to Safe Streets in some way who were later found guilty or pleaded guilty to crimes like drug distribution, assault, or federal racketeering conspiracy. Most recently, David Warren pleading guilty in July 2024 to federal racketeering According to the court documents, Warren was a member of the Black Gorilla Family, or BGF, which is a nationwide street and prison gang. Warren admitting to participating in BGF meetings in 2015 here Black at this now-shuttered Safe Street site. Along East they had gang meetings at the actual headquarters. I bet half of them were gang members. Oh, yeah. That motherfucking gorilla meetup. All the neighborhood gorillas. Harambe hangout. <laughs> yeah. Rough facts. And, them, and the Black Gorilla family don't play. Like, they got more juice in the L, in the California prisons than the Bloods and the Crips. They was the car that the Blacks went to, that was in when they was in prison. The Black um, Gorilla family. Um, that's a, that's, the, they killers. They kill cops, too. Like they they whack out the name. Like, I'm not surprised. On some ambush shit. East Monument Street, the Safe Streets location managed by Living Classrooms at the time. The court documents detail two BGF members who attended the meetings at the Safe Streets site were employed by Safe Streets as violence interrupters. During the late spring and summer of 2015, Warren says he and other BGF members used the site as a de facto BGF clubhouse, storing drugs, guns, and plotted violent crimes on behalf of the gang. Diving deeper into the court documents, jumping to May 2016, at the direction of someone else facing racketeering charges, Warren and another co-conspirator plotted to murder someone. That person shot four times, according to the court documents, but survived. Warren admitting he and someone else got paid $8,000. The court documents also show Warren was involved in four more hits, often at the direction of someone else, including in 2018. Instead of shooting the target, Warren and others killed the target's mother and sister. <laughs> I'm sure this is the only incident, though. You know, we shouldn't look at all the rest of the safe street programs around the country. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. They <laughs> That's like a capital crime. This guy should be on death row. They just, you can't just breeze past that, man. The direction of someone really else, they are. including in 2018, instead of shooting the target, Warren and others killed the target's mother and sister. Warren still got paid for the job. And then in August, Warren admitting to trying to kill someone yeah. else. but What you going to do? Be like, oh, no, nah, man. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> nah, man, you ain't killed the right person, man. Get out of here, man. I ain't got you. I ain't got your fucking money. See, safe streets. I didn't realize that their violence interrupters go out and kill the people doing the shootings. That's maybe a new way to tackle this. Yeah, facts. Yeah, man. If you think about it, too, man. Yeah, that's true, man. Vigilante I mean, justice. Yeah, I mean that's the literally the only way you can stop this. Like literally, like 
nothing else would work if you really want to be frank with it. That's the only thing that would work. It's gonna, <laughs> but you have to, you have to, to understand that it's gonna be a lot of this shit. Like niggas kill motherfuckers' moms and sisters and shit. Right. That's not really a solution, I would say, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean that's just sad, man. Like, God damn, this story's so fucked up. But that the, the person that happened to, there's no name or face. They just a a line in a fucking documentary. That person that that was that person got this shit wrapped. <laughs> Big mama. <laughs> Hey, Kevin, damn. That's crazy, man. Fuck, man. Jesus, that's so sad, man. Um, you don't do you don't do big mama like that, man. I don't give a fuck what yeah. she did. Some Negro that's in a program, an anti violence. Yeah, program. man. Just wait till I get safe streets on your ass. <laughs> right. Right. The mercenary right, company, right. Safe Streets. Right, wow. Ended up Straight shooting up. two unrelated people inside a home, killing one of them. Warren's plea comes some six months after Tyrell Jeffries pleaded guilty to federal racketeering conspiracy two. The plea stemmed from a 2022 indictment of six people tying BGF to six murders, 11 shootings, armed robberies, and drug trafficking operations. Jeffries also admitting to attending meetings for the notorious gang at the Safe Street site off East Monument Street. One of the hits Jeffries was involved in was against a rival gang member in May of 2015. That shooting executed at the intersection of North Rose and East Monument Streets just down the block from the Safe Street site. Two years later, Jeffries admits to selling cocaine on the 2400 block of East Monument. When we first learned of Jeffrey's plea in January, can you definitively say that similar things are not happening at other safe streets locations in the city? I don't care if those things are being had at the DBW office, if they're being plotted out in the basement of Fox 45 TV, wherever they're being plotted out. He's such our a folks are fucking to find snide people piece of and shit. remove them. He had to say Fox. Yeah, he's such a fucking. Ugh. Uh, of course, he so, wouldn't man, care. I, I agree. Like, um, the, there should be consequences for this shit. You shouldn't be able to fucking act like this in public and be the mayor of the fucking city. This is a goddamn disgrace. Fuck, act like, like this. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't be able to look like this. Like, yo, you got a black mayor, dog. Yo, I think it's got to tighten up, bro. I think they watched too many episodes of The Wire. Yeah, man. All the Wire, though. If this nigga, yeah, if this nigga is your mayor, that you basically live in the wire, bro. This is uh yeah, yeah. Clay Davis's little brother. Tell you, man, this is this is the real life Carcetti, man. Plot it out, fucking the black Carcetti. Are not happening at other safe streets locations in the city. I don't care if those things are being had at the DBW office, if they're being plotted out in the basement of Fox 45 TV, wherever they're being plotted out. Our folks are working to find those people and remove them as we and working with our law enforcement partners, as was the case in this case. In 2015, the city shut down the McKeldry Park Safe Street site on East Monument Street, but later it reopened. And now the site is operating at a different location just a few blocks away. October 2022, Vernon Harper guilty on federal drug charges. Court documents indicate Harper admitted to possessing fentanyl intended to distribute and at the time of the crimes was working as a violence interrupter at the Brooklyn Safe Street site. Those details, again, only revealed through Fox 45's investigations, not City Hall disclosing the information. Harper sentenced to 18 months in federal prison, released in July of 2023. Ronald Alexander sentenced in 2021 for federal drug charges. Court documents show a photo of Alexander wearing a Safe Street shirt, holding what prosecutors say was a bag of drugs. Prosecutors also say Alexander distributed <laughs> fentanyl, <laughs> cocaine and heroin, and he was using his Safe Street's job to try and stop investigators from tracking him. Alexander... <laughs> 
That's what happens when you hire all ex cons to be violent preventers. He's thinking it's a great cover. This will totally throw him off. Yeah, this is this is this is bad, man. This is it's this a particularly is going kind of scam. You got you got uh June Bug and uh little Nook Nook motherfucking patrolling the streets for justice. <laughs> And he wiped that whole shit. This shit is this shit is corruption at the highest level, man. It just lets you know that like blacks, no matter what, man, the impulse control, like you hear they can't even just blame us. Impulse that uh, what we lack with impulse control is gratification deferment. It 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 expresses itself when we get power in positions like this, man. Because we have no ability to regulate ourselves to, to you know what I'm saying? To It's not even like about being a good person or a bad person. It's just, you know, you can't control your impulses. You can't um, control your, you know, your thoughts, your um, intrusive thoughts. Or sentenced to 11 years in prison. The- real quick, real quick. I was taking some contract law classes. And the uh, professor said, if you really want to make money, <laughs> go into politics. Like, he was dead serious when he said it, too. So you want to make some money and fly under the radar, get into politics. If you really want to make money, money, become a, a, a be black become a felon, get out of prison, and then get into politics. Yeah, do a bit, and then <laughs> get into violence interruption. Wow. Which is really just, you know, another opportunity to uh, get out there and slang and kill. The criminal connection to safe streets doesn't stop there. In 2018, Ricky Evans pleaded guilty to federal racketeering conspiracy, admitting to being a high-ranking BGF member. Court documents show Evans distributed drugs and signed off on the murder of another BGF member. And in 2015, Terrell Hallen charged with drug and assault charges. (laughs) Despite links between criminal activity and the Safe Streets program, Mayor Brendan Scott and the rest of City Hall continued to stand by the violence intervention program. Now, in October of 2023, the FBI executed a search warrant at the Beller Edison Safe Streets location. The site was closed for six months, but has since reopened. We sent several questions to the organizations in charge of Safe Streets after that search, but their answers did not shed much light on the investigation itself. And in May of this year, Fox 45 News had the Beller Edison Safe Street site under surveillance for five days. The findings raising even more questions. Surveillance video and photos show a string of three days where not one person was seen going in or out of the safe streets. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that they're being used as stash houses. Like, they're actually yeah. throwing uh, drugs out of these places. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're going in the back or maybe, you know, it's it's got to be, it's, it's something shady. They, you know, if everything was on the up and up, it would just be like the camera would just come to the front door. Somebody would come, hi, such as come on and sit in a like it, it ain't what is like why can't they just open the door and welcome them in and sit them down and talk to them in the office at any of the safe street spots? Anybody like it's just so this air of secrecy is so like un it's like. It's super shady. It's beyond shady. It's like, damn, like, y'all ain't even just shady. Y'all is, like, literally, like, blatantly running some cold yeah. work. Then you got this nigga <laughs> sitting on the porch and shit. This nigga, like, nigga in his late 40s, pants sagging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Site along Bel Air Road. One day, a man was seen wearing a Safe Streets t-shirt sitting on the steps outside the building. While sitting there, two teens were observed running out of a beauty supply store across the street following an apparent robbery. The owners of the store were observed running after those teens, but the Safe Streets worker appeared to do nothing. 
I questioned Mayor Brandon Scott about the surveillance findings, only again to be told their work is done in the streets. So I think that if you know the work of safe streets, you know that their work is in the street and not in the office. Their work to save so lives drug in the streets, dealing. that will be oh my uh, God. Uh, equal to you pulling up to a police district and saying, well, there's no one in here. They're supposed to be out in the street preventing crime. Now, LifeBridge Health telling us at the time, most site hours range from noon to midnight. But again, the surveillance showed no activity at all on some days from noon to 8 o'clock in the evening. And those are just some of the questions we have about the Safe Streets program. We also want to know who the Safe Streets workers are, how they're vetted, yeah, and how they're trained. Who... Only through our investigations have we been able to start to peel back the layers and well, really understand yeah, I don't know the the answers. how Baltimore City is um, Bro, this is how the fuck they don't know the answers to any of these. These are like some of the most basic questions, and they don't know the answers to them. Like, you don't know who's working, it's, how they get trained. Like, how the fuck y'all don't know this shit? It's just flagrantly illegal. It's just breaking all sorts of laws, and it's just getting right, away. It has been for like a decade. There's money. It's I, I say money because they this program must be getting big grants and they must be chopping it up up there in Baltimore. Yeah, there's Everybody's some city council people. member who's taking bribes and shit. I mean, this I, the same shit is going on fucking everywhere. Maybe they're like independent contractors, so it's like kind of hard to find them. But either way, it's yeah. Spending your tax dollars. When Mayor Brandon Scott took office in December 2020. It was full steam ahead for the violence intervention program, Safe Streets, an effort that has been in Baltimore for nearly 20 years. At first, the 10 Gary. sites run by a patchwork of community-based organizations. City Hall was shrouded in secrecy at the time when it came to how Safe Streets operated. The newly created Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, or MOZI, housed the oversight for the program, and City Hall controls the purse strings. Thousands of dollars in contracts approved by the city's spending board. Those thousands of successful mediations. Oh my God, no, 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 no. <laughs> These are who the people are doing this? Back, oh, bro. hell no. <laughs> Nigga, all these, how the fuck? Y'all, like, do they realize that these motherfuckers are the parents of the people making the streets unsafe? You know what? Like, I think people people know that, but when you got these ex-offender programs where people are coming home, uh, there's all this, um, it's touchy. As, as a white person, you really can't say nothing about it. Like, this going to have to be fixed by black people in Baltimore. And black people in Baltimore, like, if you're a white city councilman in Baltimore, you can't say nothing about this program. Are you kidding me? You, you're a racist. It's going to take black city council members and black politicians to fix this, and they're not going to fix it because they never fix anything. Thousands of successful mediations completed, but what counts as a mediation? Something we've been trying to figure out. Have Every you guys a mediation? Yeah, that was a mediation right there. These uh, life safe. So trust these niggas, these <laughs> random ass ex cons. Like, like their cops. The conceit is, is just out of this world. You piece know? Of, yo, this dude's a piece of shit, man. Hope he burns in a fiery pit. Bucket moon cricket. So he, uh, you know. Listen, man. He, he basically he, he, he basically he said, it. like, don't worry yeah. about it. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it's they taxpayers had, putting yeah. money into this shit. They had a, um, a, the three straight black female mayors that ended their um, their term in prison. Three straight, and then they had a male who was an interim. But yeah, they, they, this is a corrupt city, man. Three straight of their men ended up in prison. All black. They was out there doing their work. During an interview with a former Safe Streets worker, but they don't carry a form with them and keep track while they're out. No.
Before Baltimore's worst mess shooting in history at Brooklyn Day, leaving two dead and 28 others injured, Safe Streets completed five mediations, despite the barrage of bullets. So they was down there breaking up fights. Does that mean five completed drug deals? Yeah, what the fuck is the media? Like you can't, we don't know any of this shit because he's not talking about it. Like, you can't. I'm, oh. They claim they broke up five fights, though, because I remember I did this story when it happened. Later in the night, Monzi considers those mediations successful. Now, after relentless reporting, the city implemented an escalation that. policy for safe streets workers, five. requiring the violence interrupters to alert City Hall when they know of a large event. But no mention of getting law enforcement involved. The names of the Safe Streets workers shielded from the public as well. Because the workers are not city employees, the names are not public record, even though tax dollars are used to fund the program, to hold the program accountable for following their own protocols. Transparency questions go beyond the employees. The public knows little about how Safe Streets spent against the city. Fox 45 News received Safe Streets contracts and the documents show Monzi prevents the community organizations from talking to the media about Safe Streets without permission first. We've gone knocking at every location only to find little activity. Mayor Scott maintains the work is done in the streets, not in the office. I'm looking for the safe street. We've gone around the neighborhoods Where too, looking for offices? signs of safe streets. Often those efforts, they are not here. Not, not successful. Here. The community organizations tell Fox. So they, uh, they, this is this is crazy. They've been going to these places, multiple locations, for years, and they've never once gone there. And somebody's been there. Oh, these niggas said they're buying shoes, PlayStation, going shit. PlayStations, Bath and Body Works to build trust in the community. Like, yeah, give it all gifts, grease and pawn. They, they, they're like, like, think about it. Like, like, hey, y'all, we need y'all to. Um, we having a um, a, a a big block party here this weekend. It's gonna be thousands of people here. Um, you go talk to the local thugs. You say, hey, man, we need y'all to just, like, take it easy this weekend. You get them niggas a PlayStation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, though, like, if, 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 if we, the, 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 let's not act like the crime, there's some, some magic bullet that these niggas got. Nah. You got you. You got to give people stuff, man. You got to give some people stuff. You got to give them trinkets and prizes. Yeah, get get me that. Yeah, you got to do that, man. If you ain't doing that, man, you yeah. ain't even in the game. Hey, 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 if you put the guns down, y'all, uh, I, I give y'all a, a scholarship. Scholarship. Yeah, how long, how long scholarship. can it be expected that uh, you know it'll last? Because eventually he'll commit some sort of heinous crime. Yeah, this is this right here, man. This is this is a crazy program, man. Five News. The workers are usually on the clock during hours when violence is most likely. City council members raising questions of their own during various oversight hearings and pushing for more transparency. No, they get over twenty million dollars. Like we have to have some transparency. Uh, we've been asking for that information for a very, very long time. I think that until. Uh, we start to see transparency in data. I think that that money should be held to a halt. But Councilman Antonio Glover's request not honored. The city continues uh, to fund safe point. streets and provide little information to the people footing the bill for the program. Now, Shante Jackson was the first director of Monzi. She resigned in June 2023. I tried to ask her about the Safe Streets program many times, and I've also asked for a sit-down interview. Jackson walked away from our questions more often than not and refused to agree to do an interview with me. We're not talking about cherry-picking numbers. Let's make sure we don't report that, okay? Okay. Director Jackson, uh, can I ask you a couple man, of questions? Man, she got real serious. Fuck cherry-picking. We need them cotton-picking numbers. <laughs> Are you going to the next event? Yes. Okay. Okay, Director Jackson. Look at look at her. She she this this woman right here. Uh watch the watch the way this woman um like 
the entitlement of not having to answer questions. You're getting twenty million dollars, and you in this program, and you don't have to answer no damn questions. Can I ask you a couple of questions. Are you going to the next event? Yes. Okay. Okay. Director Johnson, can you explain a little bit more about oh, Roca? When can we learn more about Safe Streets? Uh, she on me. Eggs. I'm Stephanie a Stephanie Mavronis that took over as director after Jackson left. Yeah, she has been in the position for a little more than a year. So she often the director. <laughs> of course. Juicy. Yo, at the top, man. At the very no, no. top, it's never a sun up. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's a lot of moving parts, man. You can't have a son in the charge of something. Look how many moving parts this is, man, and how much yes. stuff got to be hid. Yes, yeah, it is. It, it refuses much, to hand man. over details and materials surrounding the program, both to us and to city council members. Whatever data was provided. To, to Hopkins or whoever did that study, um, can you provide that same raw data to the council? We would need to look into that and get back to you. I think the reason we intentionally provide aggregate level oh, data is because of some of the privacy um, and sensitive information that we've referenced earlier. The public can see those logs? Those are not public logs, no. Why? These are these are logs that are being used over the course of someone's work um, to log what they're doing throughout the day. Um, these are also not documents that I am the owner of. What? After the break, we're digging into what? where Safe Streets funding goes. An expert joins us live to weigh in on how the program is spending your tax dollars. And as we head to break, we're taking a look at some of today's top headlines. In a scathing three-report IG investigation, widespread safety concerns, and an abusive yeah, work. You keep them uh, sons on a short leash. Yeah, McKen McKenzie ain't fuck around with you goddamn baboons, no. man. Get back to work. No. McKenzie on the ass. McKenzie on the head and the ass, man. Salute to um, Big Larry, man, in the building, man. Shout out to him. Um, salute to Deluxe 247, a.k.a. Cal Ripken, a.k.a. the real MVP, coming through once again. Kenzie probably descend from a, a long legacy of proud Baltimorean slave overseers. Probably, man. <laughs> Kenzie, but Kenzie don't stop. And listen, <laughs> think about it. We put her on their ass. They still like fuck that shit. We ain't changing. Yeah, but Kenzie like y'all. She's on their ass two hundred years later. <laughs> Kenzie yeah. like y'all apes gonna have to earn them bananas up when I'm a, when yeah. I'm in town. That motherfucker, she doing all that. She been chasing after these niggas for years. <laughs> and you, she never, I think about it though, every time she she been she been going up to the, the little, she popping up at different ones and nobody's ever at any, <laughs> no matter which one you go to, nobody's ever there. The urge That's is, uh, it runs what? in her blood. Yeah, man, slave catcher, man. That shit is just crazy, man. This is this is unbelievable, man. That DC and Baltimore. So we already know Philly. This is what's going on in Philly, right? We already knows what's going on in Trenton. We already know what's going on in fucking Newark. Like if you just go up, draw a line up the East Coast, draw a line down the South, draw a line zigzag down South, draw a line up and down the way, wherever niggas are. They got they. They got their own version of this shit everywhere. Yeah. Crime and shit. And then it's a sister, second in command, and a white woman, first in command. And a fucking bunch of niggas running around on with orange shirts on, shooting niggas and selling dope. And <laughs> they don't have to answer mind. any questions. They don't have to provide any real data on if this shit is actually changing anything. That's what. That's the crazy <laughs> part. Money laundering scheme. Yeah, so it's a lot. It's definitely so much. Listen, they get $20 million. That's what they said. I don't know if that's a year. I don't know if that's over the life of the grant. I don't know. $20 million is a shit ton of money. Yeah. I would like to know, man, whether that's over the life of the grant. Right. Or so the cost of this in the country in general is like in the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. 
Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's probably possible. easily, easily yeah. in the hundreds of millions. These are the it's programs not- niggas say they that we need, and then, but they never ask like, how is this yeah, changing we anything? Ain't no programs in our neighborhood, man. You get all the fucking programs, all of them. Like think about think about um your boy Treyon right. His whole like it, it, let's just say he don't get caught. Let's just say that his his buddy don't get caught right. That and then and then turn state's evidence on him right. He was planning on like just having us empire of like crazy programs. <laughs> He was gonna get into every fucking genre. He was gonna go fed, like federal with it, <laughs> nationwide. Yeah, he was. He was gonna just do it up and just get bribes. He was gonna get rich. He he was thinking like, yo, he just gonna do this forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, man, this is just so much money floating around these it's cities. So, and bro, you just have to figure out how to do it. And this, the money is there. The money oh, is set know, aside for this shit, man. I'm gonna start a this fucking is, program. But this is why you can snitch because the first dude he was he was getting money, he was doing his thing. He got caught up. They say take, uh, give us give us somebody and we'll help you out. It was easy. He just went straight to Trey R. And Trey R is like flowing money just thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars just floating around so like think about it think about when Treyon starts snitching because he won't have to snitch snitch right all these motherfuckers it's it, you it's just going to show you it's like picking up a rock like you ever see like a slab a big slab of like granite or something you go like in the woods or something and you pick that shit up and it's Bunch of bugs under there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All worms and fucking potato bugs and ants. It's like thousand different species under that fucking rock, and you would have never know that fucking rock had all that shit under. You just saw a fucking like, rock. Uh, moon crickets. Yeah, huh. exactly, man. It's like, yo, it's like it's it's like that. That's what it's that's what it's like. Everybody's doing this shit. Everybody's floating in the money. Everybody's skimming off the top. And um, the good thing about Treyon, though, here's the good thing about Treyon. Everybody know he got caught. Treyon didn't know his man got caught. Everybody knows Treyon got caught. So everybody know, hey, man, shut everything down. And if you do it wrong, just fucking dip that shit in the bud right now. Just, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know the. Everybody, it's gonna be harder for him to catch. He not gonna catch nobody off guard. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude caught him off guard. Yo, the the shit that bothers me with niggas, man. It's like they beg for all these programs, midnight basketball, fucking low income housing, affordable housing. We need food for the kids at school and all that shit. We need free food outside of school. And these niggas still act like the white man ain't doing shit. Like, yo, we yo, we need we need like national garter acknowledgement day or something, bro. Like Yeah. Fuck that. We need it's a sad. month at least. Yeah, exactly, man. Um this program right here. With this white lady, this white lady probably like I'm not gonna sit in here and say that this white lady who like in charge of this program that she is not um corrupt. She's probably just as corrupt as anybody in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But I bet you yeah, she is she not stealing money like that. I bet you she not just taking envelopes and fucking you know what I'm saying? I bet you she doing it a little bit different. Whatever she you see how she was dodging this. the questions. She yeah, but I'm talking thing. about. I don't think she taking on the Not doing it like how them niggas doing it, dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they like, just whatever. don't. They don't do it how we do it, bro. <laughs> we, we <laughs> and, and, uh, she didn't suck her teeth at all either. <laughs> yeah, she doing it real smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she doing, doing it the high, the high IQ, let the fur 
uh, gratification way, man. I'm not the owner of those yeah. files. Yeah, and them niggas who um who's like catching all them bodies, she's covering for them. Like we all know, like she woke. She's covering for these niggas. She's she's not gonna get these niggas up. These niggas could be these niggas. You see, like that nigga who killed the mama and the sister. I bet you she knew about that before the cops did, because in those type of organizations, everybody gonna talk, man. Everybody gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? Like amongst each other. Yo, 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 girl, so so. That scuttlebutt gonna get around that order. I bet you she knew. I bet you she didn't um, inform the police. I bet the police had to find out about that shit on their own. You know what I'm saying? Have have y'all watched that show called Your Honor yet? Nah. I don't watch TV. Yeah, check check it out. uh, Yeah, I think they have all of the... Yeah, they they have all of the seat. Well, not season, but the, the full episode on Netflix, but... Yeah, check it out. Oh right? yeah, I saw that. I saw it, like 15, 20 seconds of a trailer for that, and it was like it hit New Orleans courtroom with Brian Cranston, and he's he's yeah. trying a, a black kid, and the white guys testifying against him, and, and he's like, "Well, what about this? How you said that he was uh, outside shooting you fifteen seconds ago, but do you realize it takes ten seconds to get to your doorstep? You racist! You tried to frame him, didn't you?" And I turned that shit off. No, 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 you gotta, you Man, gotta watch it, cause I, cause I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yo, I was like, this is some bullshit. No, you gotta, you gotta watch. You gotta check it out. This fucking story is crazy. Oh, man, but you gotta check, yeah. you gotta check it out. It's some heavy shit. Oh yeah, no, he was saying he, it was a shotgun house, and he shot him down the end of it. That's what it was. So yeah, what, man? It, Fuck that heavy. nigga, man. You know what this shit right here? Yeah, I don't know what I saw, but yeah, it's. I'm telling you, it's is is good. It's good as they say. It's good television. It was well written. I can't do the victimhood shit, man. No, it ain't yeah, no victimhood yeah. shit in it. I just assumed it was some Central Park Five shit or something. No, oh, no. definitely is. If it, if it's like niggas this, involved with it, it is. Listen, this shit had me fucked up at the ending of it. Like, I was just like, "Yo, you gotta be bullshit me." But I, I'll give y'all I'll give y'all a piece of it. I don't want to give away too much of it. But his son, his his son does an act and he tries to cover for his son as a judge. But so it's a all, bunch of white people committing crimes in the woods. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was it wasn't even a crime. It was actually an accident. It was an accident. But it turns into some some wild shit. But you got to check it out. It's a good show. A real good show. All right, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. And on that note, man, um, great show, man. Um, support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. Hit the like button on the way out. Same black time, same black channel. I'm out of here. Peace out. Peace out.